I'm Justin. Richard. I'm Brad. And we designed a uh, applied behavioral analysis system. Um, and not many people know what that is. We didn't know to start with either. Um, applied behavioral analysis is a scientific method uh, for education, pa educating patients with autism. Um, there's, a there's a special structure to it. Um, the rest is within each uh, training institution. Uh, there's a director, uh, which is the top level, the full uh, admin as we look at, looked at it. Um, they pretty much run the whole um, organization. Under them is the consultant. They're the ones that are licensed, um, take special training, are certified to actually put together the programs and targets that the patients are assigned to. Um, and then there are the EIS specialists, who are the members that are trained to uh, implement and uh, conduct the programs that the uh, consultants put together. The consultants are also able to train as part of their certification. It's kind of progressive. Uh, the programs um, are built up, are uh, built upon targets. So it'll be anything from a, a pen, say a specific word, something in the alphabet, um, something based on what you want the uh, patient to progress on. Um, there's different types of response uh, for the data collection that we're doing. Um, a plus sign indicates that they did it perfectly. You tell them to pick up a pen, they picked up a pen. Um, P means they were prompted, so you had to tell them to pick up a pen and then pick it up and show them that this is the pen and then they did it. Um, M means you model it, so you would actually take their hand and take them to the pen and show them how to physically do it so they get that motion down. Um, uh, minus sign uh, means that they didn't do it. Um, or sorry, they just did it incorrectly, so you tell them to pick up a pen and they pick up a pencil. Um, similar concept, but they just didn't do it correctly. Um, e means they didn't look at you at all, so they were looking at the clock or something randomly moving. Um, uh, so that they, they didn't know what to do, they didn't know, um, and they didn't do it properly. And then a zero just means they didn't do it, uh, didn't listen to you, didn't do anything. Our motivation, um, I, we didn't get a, a giant binder as a demo, uh, but as the uh, EIS specialists go into the training sessions, they usually carry a three inch binder full of paper, weighs about five pounds, and they have to lug this around to them and they'll write down everything inside of, uh, for each trial. So we wanted to increase uh, efficiency, increase accuracy, specifically reduce costs so that they're not spending all this money on the paper, the ink, everything that they have to do to do that, um, and be green. Um, we're increasing efficiency and accuracy uh, by letting them go back a little bit easier, change their, uh, their options. Uh, they don't have to like scribble out and try and figure out their writing as they're going. It's just pushing a button in the app that we'll show you a little bit later. Um, and it's just quicker because they're not trying to find the right page for the trial. It's all in one place on one screen. They're not constantly going back and forth anymore. Okay, these are just a few of our functional requirements. Now, the way we developed this system is our contact informed us that there were different levels of specialists. We have director. Now, the director can do everything. They're capable of managing any of the websites. They can assign patients to consultants or to specialists, or move those around, change credentials. They have access to everything. Um, as you can see, primarily their job is to maintain uh, the web content, which passwords, usernames. If anybody has to change anything, they have to talk to the director, and he has to go in and physically change it. Um, managing programs, that is basically left to the consultants. The director has access to it, but it's the consultants who generally create the programs, which are just groups of targets, and these targets you know, are actions or objects which are to be uh, performed or used. And then the data collection is done by both the, generally by the EIS. The EIS inputs the data, will actually input the data on the application. And they can also go back and view the progress of the patient and things like that, um, as well as the consultant can do that. This is just a basic format. Our actual application is developed and usable on both Android and iDevices. Um, and we developed that using AppCelerator, which uses JSON code and SQLite. Um, our database is just a basic database. We run it through MySQL, and it's basically pulling 
data with PHP from the database, as well as updating it. And the JavaScript maintains the HTML5 web development. Uh, this is our ER diagram for our database. This is just a basic flow of where the data goes in our database, how it's organized. Um, we've taken it so that each has its own individual primary key so that it's very easy to look up. Say you want to look up a specific program. Each program has its own individual ID. You can go right to that program. Same thing with patients or uh, users of any kind. If you're the director and you need to go and change somebody's email or, pa or password, uh, you can do that very quickly and easily with the setup. Okay, so now for our demo. Um, we wanted to take you through what the normal life of a new patient um, from entering the organization um, through uh, a few different uh, uh, programs. Uh, so the first thing will be registering. Uh, to register a patient, the, this is a director uh, assignment. Uh, so the director will log in um, and they'll add the user. Um, will that Ricky kind of do it over there? All right, so the first thing we'll do is log in as the, the director. Uh, he has his own unique username and password. Uh, as you can see on the top here, he has all of the functionality of, uh, of the full director. Uh, in the patient screen here, we'll add a new patient named Sally Johnson. Uh, we'll also put in her parent's name and email address so you can email the parent uh, your progress or whatever needs to be done. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the, uh, the um, user and assign the consultant to a to the uh, new patient. So now next time they, that uh, consultant will log in, they will be able to see Sally as a new patient and give her grades and what she needs. Um, so the next task would be um, for the consultant to assign to create a program, assign it to that uh, new registered user. Um, Right, so now the consultant will log in that was registered for Sally. Uh, again, it has their own username. As you can see on the top now, we have new tabs. And you can see on the bottom here, Sally has no tasks completed because there's nothing assigned. So what we'll go into here is the add a new target. We'll also add book and assign it to the category called classroom. And we'll also create backpack and assign it to uh, classroom. Uh, I have a bunch of other targets added in here, so we can come up to I'll just go down here and show you all the, uh, the targets that we're adding. And then we'll come into the programs here and create a new program. Uh, so, what we'll have Sally do is create our uh, new program called Classroom Objects. Uh, it will be a list of stuff, average stuff to find along the classroom. And then we have counter values here for duration of correct response. <laughs> that What that will do is have a duration time so that uh, it keeps track of how long it takes for them to find this correct answer and keep track of it for each. Response. And the second one here is loss of eye contact. That would be an integer value that you can put in and you can based on how many times you see loss of eye contact. Um, we also add here a brief summary that you'll be able to see on the, the iPad or the Android um, so the user knows what's going into it. Uh, you can add up to four different counters, and there's a fifth counter that's always added, and that's the duration of the entire all around uh, uh, lecture time with the student. And then those separate durations are for when you're in specific uh, target class. And then what I'm doing here is going through and adding each uh, target to the classroom objects. And what we'll do here, I just skipped ahead, I showed here that I've added 13 targets now. They're all in that right column. You can remove certain associations with certain targets. If you delete the target, of course, the target will be deleted from every single program. And now I assign the program to the specific student. As you can see, Sally here is now into classroom objects. And then we'll come back up to the homepage to show you that Sally now has 13 targets into her name, but she has not cast any of them yet because they only went out to the iPad yet and assign certain things. Okay. All right. And using the tablet, this was the main, one of the main 
things we wanted to get accomplished for this project was to allow for easier uh, data collection. And as my colleagues have so stated at the beginning, when doing it on paper, you end up with a stack of paper that weighs quite a bit for, uh, well, like five pounds. Um, and that paper takes up space and has all the negative attributes that come with paper. Uh, one of which is you have to flip back and forth when you're going through if the data skips around or you happen to, you know, they do something that was not expected or uh, that. So basically what this application does is it eliminates not only the paper, but a lot of the stuff that comes with it, the storage room. And let's say you want to make a copy of the data. Uh, to copy paper, you got to go and take the copier and copy it. But with this, you just merely have to click a button and it copies the data. So uh, this just eliminates all of that excessive paperwork, which actually allows for uh, the specialist to spend more time with the actual patient. Because theoretically, they were spending about five to 10 minutes just doing this paperwork each session. And if you multiply that by six sessions, that's an hour of time that could have otherwise been spent working more with the patient. And I'll let Brett explain a little bit more about the app. So here is our main login for our iPad application. So first, you would have to sync all data to offline. So if you press the sync button, you take it to this screen, where it lists the users and patients. You choose which to sync, sonar user to sync, just in consulting. Process and only grab the data that's necessary to add consultants and all the student all the patients that is using. So when that's done, you go back and actually log in as Justin. Now this data is trans transmitted using HTTPS. So this is all the patients that Justin has uh, assigned to. This is uh, Sally's program is just the one that created. The next screen will be the data input screen. This will have all the targets and list boxes. You can scroll through them. You can also press the more expand button. It will give you a different layout of the data and allow you to view all of the frames. Pressing on a, this, one of these targets will take you directly to that target and select the so you can input, start input for that target. On the bottom, you have all the, all the counters that we created for this program. The duration, the length, and the integer kind of on the So to start, you can just press the run button and you can change this instead of having to write it all down. Like and those are all the different responses that Brian mentioned earlier. So now we just go through and create some data for this. There's a loss of eye contact. You can hold down minus and it will pop up a little box that will allow you to select E, which is the same there. You can also jump straight to a different target. back, you will see on the right a pie chart that will update actively as you make changes. Uh, it will display all the different responses and percentages that have plus a card percentage and I have a card percentage. And those are useful for what the EIS is focused on. So, also 
Also at the bottom there is attachments which responses. So this is a difference here. This is showing you the difference in the data. This is two different programs on it. We just kind of show And you have to sync both ways specifically because we designed it to be able to run offline. That was one of the requirements given to us. Um, because a lot of times we'll go um, someone's home rather than being in an office all the time. Uh, the last important piece of this is we wanted to make it so that parents of patients, um, generally speaking, the patients are children, the parents could actually view the reports. And not just the parents, but also the specialists, because what happens is sometimes a patient may be assigned to a specialist, and this patient may have accomplished uh, certain tasks already, and of course the new specialist isn't going to know as they haven't been working with the child. So what we've done is we've made it so we have reports that are printer friendly and you can actually print it out and it shows the progress of the student on all of the programs that they've done and pretty much where they stand in terms of what that specialist was working with them on. So now that there are uh, brains associated with the program, we'll walk back in with the consultants We'll be able to do the report now. As we scroll to the bottom, you can see the progress bar is updated with their new amount of past tasks. And you can see here they have an overall performance and a list of assigned programs. And just for demo purposes, we'll show a different person here, multiple programs here. Uh, it shows each of the uh, designated counter values for each duration and uh, response time and all that. Um, those eye contact with the top program. Um, it has the, the student's name at the top, the assigned member that was printed off, and the date that we printed off that. And it's all printer friendly, that's why there's a lot of background assist uh, for the uh, member to print off. And this is all email friendly too. Uh, so you can email to the, to whoever was assigned to them or the parent or whoever. Okay, are there any questions? <clears throat> So in the last example that you just had, the, uh, the animals program one, whatever, and then the animal travel um, guys, you keep track of different days in the series, how they, how they progress and how that, how that impact the report. So if somebody goes through the first session and they get a bunch of models and prompts, they're going to get better over time. <coughs> you see that. How does that impact your uh, design? Yeah, so every input, every response will have a timestamp uh, attached to it. Um, so you'll know when every level was passed. So we can look back at that. And most of the time, uh, each program will be customized before every session. So they won't keep doing the same program over and over again. So but you the, define the alphabet program again? You um, define it separately. So you'll assign them the same program, um, but it'll be a different data set. One of the different experiences, why web page do you set the programs on the patients? We wanted limited data on the app um, because it was going to be off-site. Um, we wanted to be able to house as little as physically possible there. Um, so we honed that to strictly the data collection um, so we get the best experience there. And then we built the uh, web front end to do all the management. This is a question too. Why sync without the login? If I grab someone's iPad, right, I hit the sync button. I get all, I get patient names. You get the encrypted database. Uh, so you don't just get plain text data. Um, the reason we have to sync first is um, because that's where all the login information is stored. So if you don't have the login information, you don't know what to authenticate uh, against. So the story is written on the list? Yes. What are the different logins? That we're not sure. Well, of course, you just use the Of course. 
Yeah, they're, they're starting, this uh, program specifically, they are starting to um, do a lot more um, regulations of, um, and it's starting to get a lot more mainstream. Um, so they are requiring more um, HIPAA laws and more of the uh, 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 certifications to be able to treat them in this manner. Did you think about, uh, are you doing anything with respect to old data, bringing in data from more Bring data all in together so you can do analytics across different programs for effective insurance. Like um, we haven't. That wasn't something that we thought about. Um, all right. <laughs> most most of what we've done is um, what we were asked for from a third party as far as requirements, basically to re uh, replace exactly what they're doing now. Sure. Um, so that would be something. The way our data is built, it'd definitely be something that we could build upon. Um, five, five years worth. Of we haven't implemented that. Uh, we thought about that um, because the iPads do have cameras. Um, it wouldn't be a far stretch, but it's not something we implemented at the time. We have the iPad for them to do this prep. Okay. 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 Okay.